starting in five seconds. It is weird that this is literally a motion because what you're doing is giving so much power to autocratic governments and also not only autocratic governments because let's not pretend that France is not going to use this to infiltrate on its citizens. It is a terrible mechanism. We are so proud to stand in open and governing. So firstly, what does this mechanism look like? I think that you're able to see every action a human makes, every move he makes, but also you're able to foresee future moves. So using algorithms, you can see where he'll be tomorrow, who is he go going to hang out with, et cetera, et cetera. So why is this crucial thing? Because notice, we understand that on a comparative, police and like state forces and everything else uh, like have the capacity to follow people. But notice why this is so much different. Because number one, they're f uh, you're usually being followed by like a human being, right? They have limited resources and limited mind power, but also limited physical power to be everywhere, uh, everywhere present all the time and see literally every action and foresee your every move. But also secondly, they're usually slow and sluggish, right? You need organization. You need police that works together. You need logistics and everything else. We think that is much slower on our side of the house. What does the counterfactual also look like, right? You, you, it's much, uh, much less e uh, easy for, for police like, to follow you, to control you, to know your every move and everything else. But also notice resources are scarce uh, in a comparative, right? So you don't have necessarily th that amount of uh, like cops that you need to follow everyone around. So necessarily there's m less of this on their side or the on our side of the house in a comparative, right? So like, uh, why is this like, uh, likely to be used mostly in autocratic and corrupt systems? Because notice that politicians have the incentive to stay in necessarily in power. This means they can control the opposition, infiltrate the propaganda, see their every move and everything else. We think this is so important, but also notice that this is not only going to be used in autocratic systems. Every single country uses this, even though they pretend like they don't. Because the comparative is, if you use too much power in without this system, people get to know this. People understand that you're following them. This is the scrutiny and the media gets onto this. This is literally untrackable. People have no idea that this is happening. They don't know whether their phones are tracked. This phone might be tracked at this moment, and I have zero idea. And everything I say in this debate might be used against me. So why is this problematic? Prior to that, actually, why we think security is out of this debate? Because I'm sure opening opposition or closing, for that matter, is going to talk, uh, talk about security, are you guys, right? So notice, uh, things like uh, spies from Russia and China are going to go run around and be funny and everything else. So notice a few things about this. Number one, foreign spies and foreign secret service agencies know that you have this system, right? So they don't use phones to communicate where they're going to be and what they're going to do because it's stupid, right? They know you have this system. They're very likely going to not use it, right? Notice that also like criminals and everything else, they use sky applications. They use, don't use regular phones to say, say, ha, ah, the stash is over there. So the police, because everybody knows this, this is happening and everything else. But also notice that this is so well hidden, like, uh, so well organized and everything else. We think that on a comparative, right, you, you still like have uh, like police, state and everything else. They have other mechanisms to follow people. I don't think this is a necessity in order to have protection and everything else. Notice that you still have po like people on the ground. You have army. You have all those stuff. I think that like countries without this system have managed for so many years to have no security problems. I think this is just a bullshit mechanism to control opposition and control politics. Everything else is just a wash. So on autocratics, notice who is going to mostly use this. Countries like Poland and Hungary and everything else, but also not only them, also countries that are on the road to the EU, like Serbia, for example, give this to the Serbian president, he'll very much like it, right? So why is this so important? Because it allows them to consolidate power. Notice what this means. It means he, can, he is able to control protests, to know where the people are organizing, to, what pe to know what people are thinking, to know what the opposition is thinking, right? But this is also mean that you can like control civil activity, NGOs and everything else. Why is this important? Because in all of these countries, having like protests, having NGO, having civil activity, is literally the mechanism to take them down or at least to organize like nation to fight against the common problem and everything else. So why is this much easier? Because number one, it's untrackable. You don't know whether, whether this is happening. On a comparative, you're very likely to know that the cop is following you. There's some weird guy looking at you all the time, right? So the comparative is you're much less able to control and everything else. Notice, this is so, oh, secondly, this is so much more efficient than everything else that these guys have, right? So no matter what mechanism they might use in like on a comparative, right? This is never going to be as efficient because they don't have, number one, the resources to control ab absolutely everyone that they want to control. They don't necessarily have the money to do this. They don't have the, 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 like, the amount of cops or secret service agents that they want to use that they need and everything else. This is a free system that is uh, untrackable, absolutely free, zero resources needed and everything else. Why is this so important? Because this means that you're able to consolidate power as an autocratic government as a terrible leader. We think this is very, very important because I know that on a comparative they're going to say, ha, but you also have some other mechanisms to control anything else. Yes, but they're never as effective as this one. This is particularly a terrible mechanism that allows them to do terrible, terrible stuff and never allow you to organize, never allow you to protest because they literally know your every single move. But also the, like, the algorithms that they have will, uh, are able to foresee your future 
future moves, meaning that in the future you can also not organize. This is a terrible thing. Closing, yes. Uh, yes, so, I mean, that's a terrible view, I could be quite honest, because I already said that Hungary and Poland, which are terrible in the status quo and are in the EU, but also notice that Serbia is on the path to the EU, which means that you will have to comply with this policy if you wish to, to, to use it and everything else. Yes, I, I hear claps, meaning that my answer was fine. Secondly, <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about the principle. I actually don't like running principles, so we're going to run the principle in this one, but so fuck it, yeah. So notice, what is, like, what is the comparative? I know that on both sides of the house, our state controls you, state can see everything you do and everything else, but notice. Number one, they, they do it when this, this is necessary. And the reason why they do it when they, w w only when this is necessary is because they don't have the resource to control everyone at every time. So they only do it when, like, literally there is a state security issue and everything else. But secondly, they're usually authorized by some, like, higher authority. Like, the judge has to give you a warrant to, to come to the guy's house and everything else. Right? But uh, also, like, uh, notice that, that they only have, like, limited resources and everything else. Meaning, but also, they don't want to be, like, uh, they don't want people to find out that they're doing this and everything else, meaning they do it much less in the state to school. Why is this problematic? Number one, it's just too much. We think it's too much. We, they literally see you take a shit every single day. They literally see you talk to every single person you talk. They, they like know your every move. It's terrible. Secondly, we think this, this, uh, the, the algorithm can foresee your future moves, which means this is even worse, right? It means that they don't know the, past, the present. They know the future just as well. But also, it's untrackable, and there is literally zero control over these things. So you can't say, like, I'm being followed, because every time you do that, people are like, oh, come on, you're paranoid, <laughs> right? <laughs> so this is, like, so why, why is this important? Because, because you think if you allow this system to exist, you give the state too much power. I'm going to uh, like bite the bullet and say state already has too much power, but that doesn't mean that we should celebrate giving, giving it more power, right? We think the state had, has power in, over people in like taxation, army. They can literally beat you up if they feel like that's fine and everything else. We think that you give them more power on their side of the house, which is a terrible thing, right? We don't feel like we have to give this recourse to the state. Zagreb will like me for using this, this right? Well, because we think that uh, like giving state too much power is something that is necessarily a bad thing. We think that you give them just too much power to literally watch you do, well, uh, like what, watch what you do every single day. This is a terrible mechanism. Please don't give this to Hungary. Please don't give this to Vucic. He'll very much like it. <laughs> to framing on how this will probably be used, why this is a trade-off, and why, in which situation will people react how, a few points of rebuttal. First of all, they tell us that people won't use phones. I think there's limited resources in all kinds of criminal groups to not lo use literally phones because phones are quite cheap. Not everyone has like satellite phones and can connect to the satellite in order to like avoid phone connection. The second thing is, also, you can do prevention. What like Austria does a lot of times is that they look who looks at very radical content from, for example, Islamic people, etc. In order when they see that they're suddenly off the grid, they already know where the address is, etc. And they can like look through the cameras if they're behaving in a certain way, meaning that they don't have to act on it. And as long as you don't act on it, and as long as the person doesn't know you watch them, there's literally no harm to the person because the person doesn't perceive a harm. The second thing is you can combine information. For example, it's unclear why and every step of the way of your criminal intent or whatever, there will be no one using a phone. Probably you're watching people already, meaning that if there is a dealer who deals in guns or something and then his driver uses a phone because the driver is not in the like biggest organization, you can still use this and like also combine information of people around this, etc. The second thing that we get is like, oh, you give more power to autocracy. I, the thing is, one, Poland already cut off subsidies from the EU because they're being fucked. Right? This is like, they, we have economic incentives from the EU to already punish them in other ways that are super massive. Then secondly, in democratic countries, and Hungary and Poland are to some extent, people tell the government where they're going to protest, right? Because they have to tell them where the demonstration is taking place. Also, when you walk out of your house and you demonstrate with people, the police sees where you are, right? It's not like they aren't. So the question is, what will they then do on the other side of the house? Maybe they're going to, I don't know if they're going to go to everyone who opposes the government to their house and then put them in jail. I don't think that they have the power to do that. I think they will get kicked out of the EU immediately if they really start killing massively all the people and demonstrators if they do that. I don't think this is what actually happens. But also, secondly, note, and this is where our framing comes in, privacy only matters as a perception and as a trade-off internally to people. Whether 
the, 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 the trade-off is here. Do I, as a citizen, prefer that Miri watches me poop or Jole watches me poop? This is the trade-off that we he have here. Two <laughs> things that we bring you. Where people feel safer and where people are safer. Because necessarily, given that we have an example of Israel, and then also other softwares, this means necessarily other countries are going to develop this software too and are going to use it against us. Who develops this software and what is this other software? I think this is countries like China, Japan, Korea, North Korea, etc. Know that terrorist organizations have a track record of like kidnapping high professors, etc. of IT or nuclear power, etc. to help them develop this, these things. Know that they also have a huge incentive to do this, especially because they lack the manpower, etc. in the specific countries that they want to spy on because often they are like on bad diplomatic terms with the countries that they want to spy on, meaning that probably um, they like, uh, um, for example, Iran is probably investing a lot in Israel in this, in Israel a lot in Iran because you can't just like walk there and say, hey, I want to know what you're doing. So what does this mean? This means that, and, and third, secondly, there's huge incentives from groups to destabilize Europe. This looks like terrorist attacks that have been happening in Europe. This looks like um, exposing trade secrets. This, this looks like exposing spies and who they are from like Chinese side, etc., in order to be attacked, attack these people specifically. This means it's better not to ban because when you don't ban it and when you actively use this, you're probably use, able to use this it, to prevent these things, also to detect other spy software, etc., because you're going to be in a competition against each other, and especially because this is a private company, and because there are other softwares, they're going to want to do this well. They're going to like pay a lot to these people who do this, etc., to have the best possible program, meaning that as the EU, you probably are able to choose from different competitors to like, and they're going to show you what packages, like we have a China-specific anti-spying uh, software that has additionally these, these things that you can use. Why do people know this exists on either side of the house? One, because of reports, news, etc., that these things exist. But secondly, they, they, this has already been bought by EU countries, meaning that they have to give it back, meaning that there will be news reports about this, that they have to get rid of this, etc. And also in reports when they Google things about this, and especially those who are critical of the state. Then on framing why the EU will do this well. First of all, they probably will do this on a targeted audience. Yes, we have Poland and Hungary, but I think comparative to like how many people, how powerful on a global stage, etc., France and Germany are, they are much having much more impact on how they use this. Like when terrorists attack or that when they trade guns, wh what messages, etc. Even if this is in code or something, you can like analyze the code or detect other spy software. This means that you are maybe able to prevent from people dying, even though people might people might find not find out they prefer to be alive then they would trade off like safety this we see this all the time when we give the power to the state to actually protect us not that they say oh maybe we can't opt into the state leave leave live in the live in the woods i don't know like <laughs> then they tell us it does mean that they don't really have extreme incentives, but also the incentives of your country are comparative. Not, I'd rather be fucked over by my own country than fucked over by the Chinese. I still have some opt-in in the civilians around me, in the people around me, etc. And I believe I have some leverage over who I vote for. I can go to the parliament because it's 500 meters away and protest and maybe die there, but I cannot go to China and tell them, please don't spy on me. Before that, closing. You, on utility basis, no harm has been done. Yes. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the, the question is, do you opt into this to begin with? And I think that people dying or people feeling safe or not safe is probably something. If they feel, if, if they perceive that they feel safer on that side of the house, I think they will prefer this. On the average person, and there's probably two groups that we talk about. The one is like the critics of the state who are like uh, against establishment, they don't believe in etc. Note that they already are a little bit against the, say, uh, against the state. And when you don't ban this, they will have more incentive to protect themselves against it. So they will like install antivirus software, they will like use secure messengers, etc. Meaning even if our spy software manages to like get the info, they will be better protected against like other spies, other software, etc. Like they won't use WhatsApp and they, the FBI won't be able to like make them uh, read their WhatsApp messages, etc. So more people are actually protected. Secondly, people feel safer. The people who actually opt into the EU, and not, this is a lot of people, because from a very young age, you're taught in school 
that your country is your culture, that we are EU as one people. You travel from EU to EU country, you can work there, etc. Meaning that you feel that EU acts in your incentives, so even more buy-in than into criminals or China. So those who, those who actually buy into this feel safer on our side of the house. For those reasons, please oppose. <laughs> Okay, so let's first rebut a couple of things that here that clearly don't make sense. Uh, Malina tells you, oh look, people feel safer because they know their government has this sort of software. Like seriously, just think guys, does knowing that your secret services has some kind of Pegasus Israeli software make you really feel safer? I would say that that goes on our side. I would say the moment when you know that the government can access the information of everyone, uh, of you know that they can access your pictures, they can access your videos, they can uh, access the, the calls you make, I would say that you feel paranoid, you feel that they have too much power, you feel like you don't have influence over them, what can you do? You can go vote occasionally, but they can influence that as well. So I think that this entire framing of, oh look, people will feel safer, doesn't really work. Then they tell you, oh look, this will make the EU so much safer. Like, if listening to just Malina's speech, I think people would be, if they don't know anything about the EU, they would be under the impression that it's, it's like Syria during the civil war, terrorist attack happening every day, war torn group. Maybe that was the case, maybe, or maybe this would make sense. But note that this is at best a marginal impact for EU safety. Terrorist attacks, how often did they happen? When was the last one? Like, well, what? It was especially because, because of this. And the last 40 years before that, we also didn't have terrorist attacks and we didn't have this software. So no, it's not like you, you fix this. And not like any way you can prove that this is exactly that tempic point that stops EU, uh, stops terrorism in the in the EU. Notice that when preventing these sort of things, so many things go, uh, go into it, like your intelligence agents in other countries, like uh, how much you can you can influence different groups, how much uh, you, you how much you have control over who gets into your country and so on. So all these sort of things, like uh, at best, this is a marginal impact, but. Even if, even if you buy it, I will prove why uh, our uh, case makes a lot more sense. Okay, let's see what, uh, what else they, uh, they, uh, they tell you. Uh, they tell you, oh look, opposition and so on, like these people that we are, gonna, uh, 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 that we are claiming that are gonna be abused, they can install antivirus software. Like look, Marina, they are everyday people. Like you cannot download antivirus software on Google Play that will prevent you from this, like seriously. And, and they can avoid talking. But on the other hand, you know who does have access to, uh, to, to the sort of software that can prevent it? Russian and Chinese spies. Exactly the people that you are so trying to, to, uh, to beat. Also they have the training to actually know how they can be spied on and so on. Thirdly, like they have much more of a capacity to send messages through different uh, different ways and so on. That's why at best you get marginally more, more uh, spies caught uh, on your side. But no, you're not preventing like, like all, all of this. Okay, so why does this uh, matter on the democracy point? In order for a country to, tradition, uh, to, to transition from a, a autocracy or a hybrid regime, so to say to a democracy, a few things are needed. Like, First, you probably need at least some level of like uh, problems in your society, like economic problems, so on. And this does happen from time to time, like it's happening now. But also, also, you need a valuable, you need an opposition to show people that they have an alternative. You need to have other parties that are not aligned with the government, and you need them to push their message well. And thirdly, you probably need some sort of scandals that can actually like ignite the public to go against the government, to vote against them and so on and change the status quo because usually in these countries, the government has been there for like in 10 years, 10 years and so on. So how does this impact uh, these things? Well, it impacts two of them because as, as we all agreed, now these governments like Hungary, Poland, so on, but also Serbia that is on EU accession and has to comply with the rules the same way they have to comply with GDPR and other things. Uh, now they have the access to these sort of software Know that they cannot develop this by themselves. Like Serbia and Hungary don't have the capacity to build like this sort of high-end, high-end software and whatever. Anyway, they did. They would be 
uh, punished by the by the EU and so on. But notice how can they use them? They can first target the opposition, the people that you need to be a valuable uh, alternative. Not just to know when they are uh, they, they are organizing protests. That's the the, the least the least important thing. But also to know the sort of scandals that they have. And I'm not talking about corruption scandals. I'm talking about some of them being gay and talking to their boyfriend, which is a scandal in this country. I'm talking to uh, about some of them having I don't know doing drugs, smoking weed. All of this can kill political careers, and this gives access to the government to find all of this but uh, also notice that you can you can give the uh, government such a big advantage because when they do have debates the, the these agencies will know through the tax and so on exactly what the opposition wants to push on so on all of these things also on protests and narratives that the opposition is going to push the government is going to have such a big head start because they're going to have you you don't uh, they're going to have all the information meaning that they can push scandals they can manipulate they can be the opposition in every debate they can really make fools of, of the of the opposition but also two other groups. First, journalists. Notice that journalists are necessary in order for government shit fuckery to come to light. And this is very important in order to cause scandals to motivate people to go on the street. With this, what can you do as a government? Well, first you can monitor quite a lot of uh, a lot of people, journalists, especially since you probably know the ones uh, the ones that are investigating and so on. To a some degree, you already have the capacity through police to follow them and so on. But now you can do it so much well. You can know when they get the information, which uh, information that is necessary. You're going to know what case they are building and so on because you can access their laptop so on all of that meaning what can you do first you can pressure them because you're gonna know when they're gonna publish a story but also you can hide and destroy evidence you can influence witnesses so on you can even use violence in the most most extreme uh, cases okay uh, closing do you have anything Guys, guys, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good question. Your POIs make our case stronger. Like, notice, guys, like the police, like these sort of uh, services, like we don't have thousands and thousands of investigative journalists. It's easier for people in a basement in Belgrade uh, that are paid to, to access, like, uh, to, to spy on a few hundred journalists than it is to for every hundred journalists to have, like, two policemen walking and following them every day, and that's not going to be a near effect. Notice that you can also whistleblowers. Whistleblowers are necessary, those working in the government, working in companies, because uh, now you can, through this, you can spy on the most crucial people. Like the biggest scandal we've had in recent years in Serbia that almost brought the, down the government was actually in the military complex when one of the head guys actually went against the government, showed evidence and so on. That, that is the thing that rocked the government more than anything else, else crucial. We, if the government had access to this, they would simply monitor the key people. I mean, they could do the same thing with the journalists, hide, destroy evidence, pressure them, uh, discredit them even before they, they do anything. This is how we win. Notice. These dictatorships influence tens of millions of people in the EU and even outside of it, like in Serbia. At their best case, they prove marginally better safety fighting terrorism, so on. That is not the main concern for Europe. The main concern, a much bigger uh, concern, is the fact that tens of millions of people are living under a dictatorship that is ruining their lives, that is oppressing them, that is making a shitty economic situation, manipulating it. That is how we win overall. <laughs>
If these governments are so autocratic, so dictatorship-like, so against human rights and everything the, the EU stands for, I'm unsure why they would care about this ban, so I'm unsure why they have a difference on their side of the house in the first place. But secondly, why they definitely do not have is criminal groups now no longer using that. So in my case, actually Marina, what Marina tells you is that probably what affects most people is where, how easy are their phones to hack. If there is a group of people who are super paranoid about the government or someone tracking them because they know this software is legal, there's going to be a lot of pushback for uh, operating uh, software and for hardware to be pretty secure, to keep up to date with these new expensive developments in spyware. And sure, the majority of people aren't really gonna be aware, like yeah, maybe of them will install more antiviruses, and I think that's already great because the vast majority of impacts in the debate probably come from people having their banking records hacked and having their bank, bank accounts ranged rather than by high, uh, chases by the government, but I think those who don't, because on both sides of the house people are probably, the majority is still quite technologically illiterate, what I do benefit from is the fact that there is a lot of scrutiny being done by people who actually understand this, who are actual experts, that are publishing all of the phones that are hacked by governments, all of the phones that are insecure, all of the phones that they shouldn't have, and that is how you get more secure hardware for everyone. I think that's a pretty good benefit. Like, Marina already touched on this and no one rebutted, so I think at this point it still stands in this debate. I also think what is probably more important is how are governments going to use this. So, um, notice, if this is legal, as it is in the status quo, it is a tool in the toolbox. Whether it is used or not, it does make criminal activity harder and riskier. And notice that probably the fact that we are pretty good at preventing crime right now, and that we hear about so many terrorist attacks that got stopped, and we hear about so many cartels and drug gangs that get caught and dismantled, might actually potentially be because, we ha because our governments have this kind of software. But also, what we do have in the status quo is accountability because there are people who, who are angry because there are people who create scandals uh, and because there are people who care. Let's look at, assuming you ban this and assuming no government uses this legally or illegally, what could, do governments still have access to? Things like cell tower data, all of your banking records, all of the contracts you ever signed, things like street cameras that are pretty much everywhere in most big cities, CCTVs that are in, in all public buildings. You can still use algorithms and big data if your problem is you can process data easier. What do they say? Well, you know, it's hard to sift through it because, you know, um, you need, you need um, uh, a court order for this. Presumably, if this is legal and every, everyone holds these countries who own the software accountable for using them, they also need a court order to install this software on some citizens' phones. They probably need good reason to do that. They probably neither have the ability nor the incentive to just casually install it on everyone's phone and then have, I don't know how many policemen would be required to go through everything and go find something. And notice, they don't care about that harm being done every day. No one on government cares about that harm, right? They're concerned with like, oh, but is there a harm done even if you don't perceive it? It already is done. I'm unsure why this additional tracking software that they don't actually prove will be used abusive, uh, abusively beyond, you know, countries that don't particularly care about the rules have the incentive to use it abusively, but they can also use other tools abusively. Um, I'm unsure why this is a bigger harm than that. Not only that, but I genuinely think that at the moment where the governments, especially authoritarian governments, have the ability to control pretty much all internet, pretty much all press, and things like that, I have no idea why on top of it having like quicker access to your phone records because you don't need to go to a phone company first. Like, what's the tipping point? What is the additional harm that they can do that they don't already have access to without it? I genuinely think there is a very small difference that is being made. What, however, does work differently if these countries are known to have this software and can be held accountable for it, is that one, it is pretty hard to erase the data of you having used it because like the citizen in question might not realize it, he or she is being tracked. However, presumably other EU governments that have more funding and more specialists than like Poland and Hungary are going to have the ability to do that. And when, uh, when you are being oppressed, you probably have little power over your government anyway, but this is something that you can actually take to the EU Court of Justice and something that, you, that is tangible proof. Is this very likely? Probably not, but it's a hair of a lot more likely than you being able to prove that that civilian walking behind you two days in a row was actually a government sent official that was out there for you because you did some did or said something against the government and I think that is something that you also get more of on our side of the house before I look at criminal activity closing opening look 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 it says similar software 
there's clearly many of them, there's clearly gonna be copycats, clearly criminal organizations have incentives to develop their own copycats. I have no idea why the EU banning it does, doesn't, one means that Pegasus cares about not selling it to people the EU doesn't want it to sell it to, but two, why copycats and other similar software, sure maybe they'll be a bit, more, a bit less powerful because they need a bit more to catch up, but most of the harm still exists. I have no idea why that works. Marina gives to you a lot of incentives why the more pissed humans, uh, like uh, the population get, the more concerned they are, the more accountability you have, the more checking mechanisms you have, and also the more people you have putting pressures and actually uh, uh, ruining the reputations of like phones and, uh, and hardware that are actually e easy to get hacked, right? But also, what is really relevant here is that criminal activities uh, probably have an easier time exploiting it when this is something that is assumed to be banned, therefore somehow assumed to not exist in, in the EU because most people are oblivious and unaware. But also, if this is a tool in the toolbox and they have to avoid it, that actively makes their life harder. They can use satellite phones, but you can track purchases of satellite phones much better than you can track the, the burner SIM cards that were sold in an airport tourist office. They have less people they can rely on because the information can be hacked by the government. They are less efficient. Probably low level street gangs are the most likely impact in this debate and not like high level state oppression within the EU that the EU has no control over. I just think this is silly. Very proud to oppose. my speech in three, two, one. I'm going to do what shockingly hasn't come up yet in a debate about taking people's in, in very delicate information and is actually prove why people have a right to privacy that the state does not have the justification to intervene on just because they might be suspects. Before that, few pieces of extended rebuttal to opening opposition. Their main case seems to be there are bad actors that might use it, be it other uh, like authoritarian countries or criminal organizations within your own country, and therefore you need to have it yourself so you can, so you can use it against them. First, I want to point out that the clear lack of mechanization about what it means to use it against them. How the hell does the fact that I have Pegasus and allows me to prevent others from using Pegasus? Not a single mech explained on why having access to Pegasus prevents China from doing this. I have no clue but this point. Secondly, I want to point out that the likelihood of Pegasus doing it and actually engaging with authoritarian regimes or terrorists or criminals is very unlikely for a very simple reason. They are based in Israel and the reason that they remain legal in Israel and they know that many people have eyes on them is because they promise that they use it for good goals. And you know, in Israel if there's one thing we're good at is spying on people. So if, we, if they are going to actually sell it to a bad organization, you'll be sure that the Shabak and the Mossad are likely to find out about it eventually. And it is very against the incentive of my government to let them do this because our worst nightmare is this coming to bad organizations like Hamas or this coming to bad countries like Iran and we don't want them to do it to any organization that we don't completely trust. The rest of the rebuttal will be in Tamar, but I genuinely don't think that they prove this case enough. Cool. Let's talk about the right to privacy. I ask a POI to open the opposition and say, if my nudes were given to someone without my permission, and I don't know, is there no harm? And their answer is, well, there's no utilitarian harm. Duh. <laughs> That's literally the point. Yes, there's no utilitarian harm, but all of you would agree that something is clearly morally problematic within it because my consent was not given, and it doesn't matter if I know it or not, I was harmed, my right was infringed upon. Why is that? three main reasons why we think that the right to privacy exists completely independent of consequences. A, we think in many ways it is analogous to a right to property. How is that? I own information about me and pictures of me and anything about me because I made it. It is me in it and it means that it is mine. You would not take money out of my personal pocket and donate it to Against Malaria Foundation, even if clearly it would do objectively more net utility in the world, because it's not your decision to make. It is my own, and I don't let you use it. So we don't think that utility is enough to justify taking something that is clearly mine. Secondly, 
We think that it is outside of the government authority because it is the clearest example of personal sphere. Note, we think it is only justified for the government to intervene in the public sphere. We see it all the time. For example, I'm allowed to discriminate in my own apartment. I may not like some people and not invite them for my birthday. I may even be racist when I do this. And this might make me a shit for a person, but I have a right to do that. I am not allowed to do it in the public sphere, say, in a workplace or a store. The government is only allowed to actually watch over my actions under its own jurisdiction. Things I do in my own phone, my own computer, or my own head are my own, and the government has nothing to intervene with them because they are not part of the social contract. I do not engage with others while I do them, and therefore it's not the government's responsibility. And if I do engage with others and harm them in a significant way, please be my guest. They are, well, they are welcome to report me if they have this information on that. Thirdly, we think this is a form of preemptive punishment. Note what exists on both sides of the debate, and this is a huge mitigation to the entirety of OP. On both sides of the debate, if the police have gathered enough evidence to strongly suspect someone is really likely to be a criminal, they can get a warrant and then search their phone after oh, no. confiscating it and then search their apartment. And no, this is not intention. This is exactly why we think that the reason is justified is that in this case, we already have very strong reasons to believe that you are harming the public right and therefore as part of the social contract, you're violating your side and we are allowed to infringe on your rights. But pre Preemptively, we would never do this. Consider this, we would never agree to put someone behind bars without going to trial first, even if they might be uh, uh, statistically likely to do a crime. All of us would probably oppose the use of profiling, even though certain minorities are statistically more likely to commit crimes, we think it is wrong to judge them before that they have done the crime themselves. This technology is used on people who are not yet proven guilty, and the very fact we know why you don't need a warrant for it other than just knowing that it's true in real life, is based on the info slide, they don't know they have it on their phone. You're doing it covertly. If there's a warrant, people know. If you search their house, they know. They get a warning of it. So we do this to people before they are even sufficient suspects. Oftentimes, we do it based on completely demographical considerations, such as like, oh, Muslims in French, maybe they'll do terror. And we think that this means that this is yet another unjustifiable reason to do this. Other than that, I think even if you don't buy this, which you should, there are actual consequences in people's perception. But before I move on to this, I'd really like to hear Closing's extension. After you hurt someone else's right, you are allowed to hurt their right back. Before, never. If you suspect I might kill someone, you can maybe talk to me, you can maybe investigate me, you are not allowed to put me behind bars before I actually harm someone else. Let's talk about the consequences in people's perceptions. We think there are many reasons why a lot of individuals will feel like they are watched, whether or not they actually are, in a way that infringes on their, on their autonomy because it would prevent them from taking actions if they feel that they are followed. Why is that the case? First, OO conceives it to a large extent. When they say it's all over the media, I see it all the time, I, I get reports about when it happens, it makes it high in my consciousness. Secondly, many people belong to groups that both distrust the government and know that the government and dist distrust them, such as mu Muslim enclaves, such as other minorities prosecuted in their government. This means that they are likely to suspect that the government is probably doing this against them. Thirdly, a lot of good people do sometimes illegal things. I searched drugs here that are illegal. I'm sure many of you did as well. But if I know that Pegasus is something used by the government, and I, I'm afraid of this, I know when I search this that I might be watched. Women who search abortion clinics in Poland know that they might be watched. This is left in the background of their mind. This means both that they are completely scared, but A, that it actively takes away their autonomy because they are unable to search this. They are unable to take actions, go to places that might be dodgy, and actually do things that are part of their liberty because they fear they might be watched. For all those reasons, beg you to propose.
starting in three, two, one. Ben all, when there are thousands of kilos being, tra uh, being tra trafficked from the Netherlands towards outside the EU and using a lot of violence to protect their trade and to expand their trade, we say that this debate is not about China or Russia, which have the ability to circumvent this. Rather, it is about organized crime, and I'm going to uniquely prove how you're actually going to stop this, because opening failed to mechanize this sufficiently. But first, on privacy. First, know that I'm just going to state that people don't care about privacy. Why is this? Know that everybody still uses Facebook, even though we know they're horrible for our privacy, and even though like, you have the ability to opt out of cookies, people continuously do this. We therefore say people oftentimes don't care about these consequences, and also note that by the excellent answer of the POI to, uh, P the answer of the POI that I gave to OG, we know that it can be tar only be targeted and can be through everyone, because they simply don't have police power to download this on every single one and track this for all the time. Secondly, we also note that safety and security is the basis of all rights in the first place, right? Because you can have access to all other rights, such as privacy, only at the moment that you exist, only at the moment that your personal autonomy is not harmed by the fact that you're being killed by these drug gangs. Also note that at the moment, say like, ah, it's an extension of myself. Note we also have taxes, which is also an extension of self by their own metric. We still think this is moral to do. And at the moment, say it's your own computer and your private space. Note that these are oftentimes facilitated by governments with funding and to make sure that you are able to actually pay for this in the first place, so there is no such thing as like your own computer or your own internet. It's facilitated by the government, therefore they have the right to take it over. Clearly this is not a principle of stance. So why is China and Russia out of the debate? I think opening government does its job for me, right? They explain where there are alternatives such as cryptography, secret languages, safety programs, but also just dumping of false info. However, when they talk about false in uh, wrong usage, they are simply wrong in the fact that they're going to happen. First you note, I just want to note that it's not clear in the info slide that they are actually being sold to Hungary and Poland. We say this is unlikely to have been sold to these actors in the first place. First you note that the a EU would not like this in the first place, and like all the analysis that CG gives about them being perceived as good, they don't want to have this, like, because they might get banned or they might get stricter regulations. But also secondly, they just don't want to have a name smeared or the nationality being smeared in the first place. Secondly, let's just say it's been sold. What happens? The moment you make it illegal doesn't mean that Hungary and Poland will stop using it, right? They have done this before, right? There are often times where they're able to, like, don't give a fuck about the security uh, security reasons that Interpol gives you, and they're already having a massive uh, things against rights of LGBT individuals. Also note that the moment so, ah, but you can target journalists and opposition parties, I think it's fair to say, like, you can still fabricate all these uh, scandals, you can still force companies to give you information as a government, so therefore you can track this in the first place, right? We see there's literally no delta there. Also note that Interpol right now has the ability to actually check this using this program, and therefore they're able to detect the wrong usage of this, and they're able to prevent this. Note that CO never, ex uh, OG, uh, OG never talked about this. So why are you going to actually create a delta on criminal organizations? I think that opening opposition is, you know, has some mechanization, right? So like, you're able to kind of like know where people are, and now you have just an extra tool. But they never explain why is this tool so critically important. This is what's going to be our extension. Firstly note, we just say, you can prove that you've given orders, right? Oftentimes, at the moment, you have uh, now direct access to text or even just phones, or even, right, at the moment you have access to phones, know that you can also just open the microphone of the phones itself, and therefore you can literally just record the whole conversation. Therefore, you now have able to, A, have proof and actually uh, like uh, have them within a judge, but secondly, also just get more warrants in different places where they're now much more likely to be against. Secondly, also note you're much more likely to be able to link conversations, right? I think that OG talks, uh, o, o talks about you're able to like detect when there are meetings, but never explain why this is important. We say this is important because now you're actually able to, for example, work together legally with other international organizations or, inf or, or uh, companies, right? Bec uh, or countries. Why? Because oftentimes these are international organizations which need things such as chemicals to, to make their drugs and to sell them off to different markets because the home market is just not enough. We therefore say you're now able to get information from Interpol or from other organizations on who these people are, have, uh, what are their files, and that kind of thing. We therefore say you get a significantly more information than just the information about the phones. And thirdly, we say, also note that you're much more likely to have troubles on on-ground recruitment, right? Because at the moment that you're going to need people to sell your drugs, this oftentimes happens still within like maybe Telegram uh, group chats, but it's still like using phones because this is inaccessible for the average criminal or the average on-street person. We therefore say, note that then the higher ups also now need this link in the first place, and therefore you're able to now slowly actually create a hierarchy. All this is basically just not brought by OO, which is just simply a shame. I'll take opening. Look, Israel sells us, sells us weapons, police gear, one thing rent it, does a satellite. Plus, this is already totally sold, like Google, like, don't pick stuff up. 
Um, I said, I, I think I explained why Pegasus is most likely not going to sell this because they can choose where they're going to sell to because they want to be seen as good. We therefore say this is just simply not a good POI. Okay, why is this going together? Firstly, note, they're actually able to prosecute this, right? We say this is the reason why you should be able to crack down on, for example, the ecstasy creations within uh, Brabant in the Netherlands. We say there's now a possibility to actually stop, for example, chemicals coming into the country and drugs being made, but also the market becoming much more difficult to do. We say that also, note, even if they go online, we just say there's actually much more likely to be inefficient. Firstly, note that oftentimes international shipping is the quite literally outside of your possibilities, therefore you're just literally just handicapped. Secondly, at the moment you're going to talk about orders and you can't use you know, normal things, you're much more likely to have now word of mouth or other kinds of possibilities. We therefore say that this is much more difficult to do because right, then the message gets distorted. You are farther away from the people on the ground so you don't actually have complete oversight. Therefore, you're much more likely to have infighting within this infrastructure. Therefore, you say you become as an organization just way less competitive and way less good to be begin in the first place. So what is the impact of this? Right? Because I think oh, oh, oh also lacks the impact of what actually happens when you have criminals running free. Firstly note that there's just a tons of violence in the protection of the trade in the first place, right? It often looks like beating people up who are also, you know, selling drugs or also people beating people up at the moment that they aren't able to pay you for your drugs. It is creating active drugs addicts because they're going to continuously sell you. This harms their life, right? Because oftentimes it just means that they have to sell everything to continue this habit in the first place. We say that oftentimes leads to them completely destroying their ties with their friends and their families because they don't want to deal with them because it's just extremely emotionally horrible to do. But further, we also also say, oftentimes it also leads to uh, companies and shops being, uh, for, for example, you have like the legal weed trade, uh, weed trade and, and weed shops. What now happens is what oftentimes do is they throw in bricks into these uh, companies and just kind of like make so that even legal companies are now completely hurt by this because they either didn't want to sell the chemicals or now are out competing them on other funds. We therefore say you have now much more ability to actually stop things such as whitewashing of money, much more likely to stop things as chemicals coming in, actually selling drugs. We actually impact this. OO never does this. Therefore, we already simply take it over them. This is why we should win. You should vote CO. I love all of you. I'm going to start in three, two, one. The main question in this debate is how much power is too much power to the government and how much privacy are we willing to give up in order to have security? We think on top half, but also CO, we have this question of like, yes, we're giving more power to the government. Some like mitigations from each side, but no one really flips that case, so things are left standing. And we need to question ourselves, which is more important and what is the criteria for the point at which we're okay with things. What we give you as an analysis about why this is past that point and past that criteria, meaning that even if there's some more security, it's still not legitimate for that infringement to happen in this debate. We get two answers from this coming out of opposing opposition. A, people don't care about privacy because it's like Facebook. One, like they give their own analysis on why the extent of information that you can get from this specific use is so much larger than anything else people have online. That's their analysis. I don't need to explain it to you. They've already given it to you. Second, I also get to choose what I want to post on Facebook, but not only want, who I want to give access to that information on Facebook as well, meaning that it is completely different. The second answer that we get is, ah, but it's not actually a private place because like, the government is the one that has the infrastructure for the internet, so it's actually a government area. By that logic, they can also just come into my house and do whatever I want because they're the ones with the infrastructure to build the houses and to give me plumbing and to do all of those things. I'm happy that that's what they want to defend because notice that if that was true, they would just be able to ask. The government wouldn't need to do this covertly in any way because if people prioritize privacy 
lender security under all conditions. You can just do whatever you want as the government. You don't need consent. You don't need to hide it. You don't need to do anything. Just ask people for access to everything. Have a government app that you can download onto your phone that gives access to people and explain to people that it's for security, and they would do it. But the reason that doesn't happen is because people care about privacy. Let's talk about this. Uh, 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 um, anyways. Why do we also think, why do we think that these, what do we think this criteria is? A, it is, my, it, when it is necessarily something that I consented into by create, having a harm against other people as well. When I act not in the agreements that we have as a society, when I've already committed crimes, when I've already harmed other people, it means that I think that it is necessarily okay to harm other people and therefore the harm to me is to some extent consented because in my moral philosophy, causing harm to other people isn't bad. But second, if there is already a suspicion that I might have committed a crime and there is a certain amount of certainty that what I am doing is actually preventing other people from dying, that is when we think it is legitimate to infringe upon your rights, which Hadar explained have nothing to do with utility even before I get into the actual utilitarian argument about why people's perception of this actually harms them. Notice that uh, 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 um, OO claimed that people care about security more than they care about their privacy, but that's not true. They care about their own security more than they care about other people's privacy. But if they had to consent to people watching them all the time, they wouldn't. If I lived in a house where people were watching me all the time and I didn't have the freedom to do anything, they couldn't hide anything private, I would probably not want to live anymore and I would opt out of this entirely. We are the ones that gave you analysis about why the criteria for when we think government infringement upon privacy is legitimate doesn't happen in this case, and therefore it's a bad thing. But we also gave you an even more analysis on why the perception, which Miri accepted, happens on both sides of the debate that people are aware of this usage, is something that infringes upon my autonomy in ways that are significantly more widespread than just for the necessity of security. I am aware that I am being watched. I am aware that people might be looking at my phone. That means that if I am in Poland, I might not look up abortions. That means that if I am it may, may be interested in having a protest. I'm not even going to take the first step to see if other people might be interested in that as well. It means that I feel illegitimate when I want to look up information about what, how to have protected gay sex properly because I know that someone else might be looking at it and I find, feel embarrassed about it. This isn't even about whether I know these people or don't know these people. This actively harms my ability to take those steps and stops my ability to go on with autonomy. Notice that this isn't for the like necessity of security. This has nothing, that trade-off happens regardless of whether I'm preventing an attack and regardless of whether this is actually successful at the end of the day. This is just a harm that happens just because of the perception that we know that that is a thing that exists. Their answer to this is that no, but we know the government isn't going to use this badly. We have several reasons why it, they might. First of all, Notice that if people don't have political power, all sorts of minority groups and people that they like, uh, all sorts of minority groups that aren't able to complain, the government has no problem to use this against them because even if they complain, there will be no repercussions and they're in the position of power. Yeah. Two, notice that against the people that they want to focus on, like the criminals and people with the past and all of those things, that is where it is least necessary to use this specific method because you can use all of the others. And while we know that there may be some more information you can get, the reason why you need the specific instance messaging as opposed to the bank statements and being able to follow them and being able to get a warrant for their phone is different. But lastly, from the point of view of the person who has access to this, from the point of view of the person who gets to listen, from the point of view of someone who can get promoted if they stop a crime and they can explain why they got that information from a different source and they have the power to also fabricate that evidence from a different way, they have the incentive to use it, therefore we think it is likely that it will be used in that way. Before I continue opening. Yes, but notice that we're not limited to Poland and we're not limited to Hungary. Our effect happens everywhere, and that is why also we're over our opening government. Notice because it is widespread harm. It's regular citizens and it's in any country. This isn't just journalists, it's not just politicians, it's not just the opposition, it's everyone and not dependent on who's in power and where. But second, we expand the harms because of preemptive prevention. We think that people who might otherwise have organized protests in countries where they wouldn't be uh, stopped 
are now not going to do so preemptively. We think that journalists who would have looked into scandals in places where they wouldn't have been stopped now won't do so preemptively because they are afraid of those things happening. That means that on our, our side, we just, even if what they're saying is true, we significantly expand those harms into countries and into situations in which they still would have happened otherwise and explain why we lose that impact as well. I have a lot of rebuttal to security as well, but I genuinely don't think I have to because we are in the same way that we're not okay with just putting everyone in jail or giving everyone a 10 p.m. curfew to prevent some form of crime. We've shown you the criteria for why it won't be okay in this situation as well, and we've expanded those harms, so for those reasons, please propose. Already? The reason I'm fine being streamed here and give up my privacy for that is I know that there are lots of people that were like me a couple years ago, dumb nerds. Uh, please don't continue with this hobby, you know where you'll end up. Um, but there's always a, big, uh, a way bigger deal that you can end it. Know that uh, privacy and uh, your lack of autonomy, I think, extends in way uh, different areas. I think that when Piotr explains to you that your autonomy is hurt most at the moment that you're prone to a cartel that is basically fucking over your neighborhood, but also making sure that you are the worst version of yourself at the moment that you're a drugs addict and gives you the unique benefits of why this is only by this uh, kind of software uh, we are able to stop them, which was never mechanized by opening opposition, I think we can only vote closing opposition at the end of the day. What I'm going to do is firstly, I'm going to do do a brief rundown of, uh, of criminal organizations, but I don't think we got a lot of pushback. Then I'm going to talk about autocrats and about privacy. Cool. Firstly, on, uh, on the criminal organizations, where do we fit into this debate? I think opening opposition does an absolutely great job, and they're great people. They're also really nice, and I love to see them always. But what they forget to explain is the importance of this particular tool, given that there are lots of other tools that are existing to do the, the, to do the things that they're also going for. We explain the unique benefits of Pegasus within those software filling in, filling in this leak. Uh, and I, th I think that Piotr does that in three ways. Firstly, he explains to you that these things unique have that they can open microphones so you can like uh, track conversations. Note that this is not possible in any other way, which was never mechanized by opening opposition. Secondly, at the moment that you can track locations and you can actually link conversations between, between these uh, uh, cartels, then you're much likelier to actually track where they are, what they are, and also like work around all those kinds of security issues that they got them themselves in. But then opening government says that you're not always going to use them. I would say that only the the presence of the state having this software is already a massive win under our side of the house, given that uh, the, just the presence of it already changes the effect of the cartels. Why is this true? Well, basically, at the moment that you're now having to, uh, at the moment that you're working online and you know at any point always you can be tracked, then you have to change your behavior. This is the analysis of Piotr that was never, enga uh, never engaged with. Namely, at that moment, you have to go to a more offline system. You have to create hierarchies. You have to make sure that, in, that you are basically untrackable and that slows down massively. This is the link that was never mechanized in opening opposition, we explain to you that the comparative here is that you have different kind of software, but they're never as, as, as successful. We think this prevents international shipping. I think Piotr explains his uh, impact is in two ways, in which he explains, one, drugs and bad, okay? Secondly, you have secondary crime, in which is always going to harm that over. What's then the weighing over, op over opening opposition? I think it's in a couple of ways. Firstly, we think that Max in their, uh, in, in their material, at the moment that they mention cartels, but we explain two things. One, why it works, but secondly, what the unique benefit is of slowing them down. Because every day that now they're not uh, shipping drugs oh, to, to some weird place or like committing secondary crime, we think that that is the most uh, impo important uh, thing in this debate because that's uh, literally every other day that you help people with this, uh, we explain why that's so important. How do we weigh that to the rest of the case? So I think they do actually a quite gr great job when they talk about the terrorist attacks, silent POIs please. But we think that uh, we are over them in a couple, in a couple ways. Firstly, um, 
conceded. If it happens, they have a massive impact. But I think our stuff happens a lot more because crimes and drugs are something that happens every day and, and harms a lot of people. We explained to you that firstly, it slows down criminals and we think uh, that it knows that it will happen. But secondly, I think even on severity, I'm not sure we're behind them. Because note that uh, at the moment a terrorist attack uh, occurs, sure people die, but we think that on a daily basis that also happens with people that got addicted to drugs or that got in a fight in Amsterdam because they got li liquidated by their, uh, by their opponents. We think that on those grounds, we're, at, we're, we're, ahead, we're ahead of them, and we think that that stands like that. Let's talk about, op let's talk about opening government. Opening government talks about, about auto autocrats. Mary responds to that by saying uh, countries are not likely to always impose this um, because um, um, they have their reasons for it. We think, however, this loses to the structural reasons we get from opening government. Here are three responses that opening opposition does not give. Firstly, a ban of the EU is just in name. Hungary already ignores the rights of LGBT plus people already. They are literally doing nothing against it. Secondly, Poland keeps valuing their own legislation over EU legislation. We think at that moment um, that basically this thing stands in name and they already have strong rules about when you can use this software, uh, in what kind of occasions and how you can use it. Basically what opening government does is something that's outlawed already and ban it twice and then think it's going to be successful, we think there's no efficacy there. But even if we take them at the best case, we tell you that, uh, that the EU has no, ma no ma measures to actually enforce that. What are we going to do? Kick them out of the European Union? Um, uh, hack their uh, intelligence service, know that they're very unlikely to do this at the moment that there, that there is some linking with, with, with Russia over the, over the border. We think that that is super harmful for them to do, but also we just can never know when they're using the software. Know that there is no enforcement mechanism for opening government to make sure that the case holds. Before I'm going to continue to closing, uh, OG. There are multiple, like, did you make this? Then you sanction Israel, they have another one. You're also going to say, okay, so basically, then Iran makes another. You're going to sanction Iran, then the Netherlands makes another one. You're going to sanction the Netherlands, then basically Ireland makes another. You're going to sanction Ireland. Do you see why this is not working? Cool. Closing governments. Even if they're correct that we can uh, outlaw this in certain ways, I think, um, that the, that there, then governments are very likely to, do, to spy anyway. That is to say, note that the incentives for governments to spy are, uh, are uh, symmetric on the either side of the house. At the moment that they don't do it with software, then they have strong incentives to use different kind of ways, literally going to your house and then actually search it, search it through. Hadar and Tamar say, okay, but you give a warning and you can actually ask for that. What if they say no? Literally, then you cannot simply uh, go over that house. That would mean that it, it's, uh, it would not have, have been necessary at the moment that you would have been rolled out. Because in a very early stage, you can also always look. Are these people forming a threat? At the moment they're not, you can leave them alone again. I don't see any reason why that infringement of privacy is so bad at the moment that we can help lots of people with it. If I could have caught a person that killed your mother, but only checked after the murder has happened, I would be devastated about it. This is a right that I'm always happy to sacrifice. What's the, way, what's the weighing uh, further than what opening opposition says about that we care more about security than about privacy. Firstly, it's about the severity of the action. You actually prevent crime, you actually prevent people from doing very terrible things that haunt you for the rest of your life, that are very, uh, very terrible. We think that even if we then have some data that is taken away from people, we think taking away some part of your identity, namely some part of, your, uh, uh, of the things that make you you, are never as bad as the potential of someone being taken literal persons away, namely literally, uh, literally becoming victims within secondary crimes of cartels. We think that that is a way bigger impact than under closing government. But secondly, we tell you it's about preference maximization. We, Piotr already explains to you that most people don't care that much about privacy. They say, I have nothing to hide. They still go to Facebook, Insta and cookies. But thirdly, data is on the street already. Sorry, Adar. Facebook already has your nudes. I have no idea why this is going to be such an additional benefit. Only pushback we get for Tamar is that you have more info. Note that it's just different info that's now going to be there. Your data is on the street. Authoritarian governments are not going to do with it in this. The only thing that matters in this debate is the security clash. How, we are winning that over opening opposition. Please vote CO.